Fire Team 1 got us into this mess. It'll be Fire Team 2 that'll get us out of it. Really? We have a Kiro. You have a Wingo. Spelled with a zero. You said we wouldn't get caught. I mean, but who was on watch? Spelled with a zero. <laughs> we'll be brilliant in class. You guys just watch and learn. Really? Santa Claus is a Kiro. <laughs> Keep an eye on this one for me. That's crazy. <laughs> Can the three of you even come up with an intelligent question? Is the force gonna help you count to three? Group! Attention! Huh? Good morning, Captain Pierce. The group is ready for instruction. Good morning, Sergeant. And he's everywhere. Captain Pierce, I appreciate you making the time to educate my soldiers about the effects of lasers on their human anatomy. It is my pleasure, Sergeant Mosby. Now, I understand you have some disbelievers about the possibility of injury from military lasers? Sir, you might say my group has fallen into the dark side. Is that about right, Duke Job Talker? Yes, Sergeant. Is that right, Washington, or should I say Han Solo? Yes, Sergeant, but actually I was dark. Shut it. <laughs> All right, Sergeant, would you operate the lights? What do you see? More than I did a moment ago, sir. I'm right, fine, but specifically, what do you see? Light, sir. Light. What kind of light? White light, sir. White light. Yes, that is what the eye says you are seeing. But white light is actually a combination of many different colors or wavelengths. And when these colors mix, we see white light. Well, sir, all those colors are in the white light. Actually, these and millions of others. When this flashlight emits light, it spreads out in all directions. Kind of like Wingo firing a 50 cal. That <laughs> is. <laughs> but it's not a concentrated form of light like a laser. Consequently, it flows like water from the source. It's good for illumination, but not for lightsabers. You know what a lightsaber is, don't you, Job Talker? <laughs> Hit the lights, Sergeant. So the lights come on and you blink and you wait for your eyes to adjust, right? Yes, sir. Anybody know how fast you can blink your eye? Anybody? Take a guess. Warp speed, sir. Not that fast. <laughs> Hence the problem. No, the blink of an eye has been measured to take about a quarter of a second fast, but not even close to the speed of light. It's certainly not fast enough to prevent you from being injured by a laser. Sir, give him the gross part. Okay. Sir, um, something gross in there, Captain? Actually, something quite beautiful. Now this... Oh my god! <laughs> oh, it's a human eye. <coughs> Sir, a real eye? Taken from a cadaver for medical instruction. Now the human eye is one of the most incredible, most complicated and therefore amazing parts of the human anatomy. Now I show you this in order to highlight how vulnerable you are to injury from a laser. Now, when light hits the eye, it is focused 
by the lens in the front, your eye then concentrates that light over 100,000 times and sends it to a little spot in the back here called the fovea. The what, sir? The fovea. It's a spot about one millimeter wide. Well, sir, how big is that? It's less than a sixteenth of an inch. Pinhead. <laughs> Takes one to know one. And in that little spot is where the human eye allows us to determine detail. Read the letters in a book, see the scale numbers inside of a rifle scope, or look at a splinter underneath your fingernail up close. So, Washington, imagine what happens when Jive Talker decides to stare at the sun. I don't stare at the sun, Sarge. Did you allow a green laser to cross your face in your little Academy Award performance the other night? Yes, Sergeant. Was it bright? It's really bright, Sergeant. <laughs> sure was. Almost like the sun. <laughs> So, we got to protect the fovea. Now this is a low-powered laser, unlike your green laser, which can still injure you. But it is a laser, so caution is the same. Now when a laser hits the lens of the eye, it's not white light with all of its various colors coming in. It is a single wavelength of monochromatic light. Mono what, sir? Now monochromatic, or one color. Albert Einstein determined over a hundred years ago that a single color wavelength of light could actually be produced, which is what we now know as a laser. And it is this concentrated one color light which can get you hurt. Sir, you said wavelengths, like ham radios? Well, sure. Just like tuning a radio, find stations broadcasting on a certain frequency, either in AM or FM. Our eyes tune in to the colors of light we see broadcast on certain wavelengths. The light travels like waves on the ocean, and the distance between two waves is the wavelength. Now, every color, the rainbow there, can be characterized by its own unique wavelength. Gamma rays. That's incredible Hulk stuff, right, sir? Right. But what we care about here is the light regions that lasers fall into, right here. Ultraviolet, visible, infrared. You already know that the sun emits various wavelengths, some visible, some invisible, right? Invisible, sir? Yeah, you ever get a sunburn? Sure, sir. Well, you don't see the rays that do that but they come from the sun, and they can burn your skin. Now, some lasers produce UV rays. Oh, my red laser here is obviously visible. It falls right here on the wavelength chart. But we have others that are invisible. These are called infrared lasers, or IR lasers. They still emit light. We just don't have the ability to see it. When you use night vision, what do you think is happening inside of those expensive glasses? It somehow makes the invisible light into something we can see? Very good. Watch out, talker. I might have to change your name to Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the lasers you come in contact with out in the field, or could come in contact with, fall into this section. Now, this is the inside of your eye. Sergeant, would you hit return on the laptop there? If a laser of the right wavelength were to travel from the cornea to the fovea and hit you dead on the beam. On the beam, sir? Right down the barrel. Excuse me, sir, what would be the right wavelength? all visible and near infrared. And we call this area the retinal hazard region. Unfortunately for you guys, that's where most of your lasers are. Precisely. So, if the laser hits you on the beam, the intensity of that light hits the fovea 100,000 times 
stronger than when it came out of the laser. And pop. The blood vessels in your eye explode. Phobia is destroyed. Sergeant, can you return again? Then, you get to see the world like this. Forever. You may even hear the blood vessels in your eye explode from the heat. Now UV and far IR wavelengths don't go beyond the cornea. But you get cataracts and dark spots that can affect your vision the rest of your life anyway. If the laser doesn't hit you on the beam, it hits you from an angle, the fovea may not be affected. But the retina, this area all around the surface, inside the eye, and this is where you have your peripheral vision. One good hit, and that part's gone. All lasers do that, sir? No. Some that emit in the UV part of the spectrum get absorbed in the cornea. Then you get what is best described as a sunburn on your eyeball. It feels like you scratched your eye. It goes away in a few days. How do we know what lasers do what, sir? That's what training is for. To learn what type of laser you have and what it can do to cause injury. Sir, what do we do in the meantime? Never look a laser in the eye. Well, I'm done with my part. Like the captain said, never look a laser in the eye. Which means what, Washington? We'll play Star Wars, Sergeant. That's right. A laser is not a toy. And your eyeball is not a target for any laser. Or what can happen? Blindness. Oh! Oh my God! So did you just squeeze that eyeball? Not really. It was fake. Made with some eggs and mayonnaise. Really, <laughs> Sarge. The real one is still in here. But remember, it just the same. That could be your eyeball splattered all around. Thank you for your time, sir. I'm confident my group of knuckleheads will put this information to use immediately. Who are you, Sergeant? No problem, Sergeant. They're all yours. Group, attention! Okay, let's move out. Hold, 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 hold. Except for one thing. Job talk. Yes, sir. From now on, you will only be referred to as Einstein. <laughs> Is that clear, everyone? Yes, yes sir. sir. So put this mess away, and the rest of you, let's go. OK, let's go. Einstein. I do like that. Relatively speaking. <laughs>